Welcome, everyone. We've got uh, 38, uh, 39. Oh, people are still rolling in, about 40 attendees at the moment. Um, thank you so much for uh, joining us. We've been really enjoying these and getting to know our customers better and getting to know you better and hopefully providing some value to the community around um, environmental data collection, management, reporting. Um, so far, we've covered construction monitoring, mapping, and mobile GIS and wetlands. So we've done three um, webinars so far. And you can go to the events tab at our website to um, view the past ones or sign up for future ones. Uh, we've got about eight workshops planned thus far. This is our fourth one, so we're almost at the halfway point. Um, and then we'll, we, we actually will probably continue after this summer series um, as we find more and more topics that we think would be of value to you folks. Um, so we hope that you ask questions. That's really, really great when people ask questions in the chat and the um, Q&A area. It really adds a lot of value to everybody. Um, we hope you receive value and walk away with real solutions to real problems. My name is Kristen Hazard. I'm the founder and CEO of WildNote. And um, we have today with us Nancy Douglas, who um, I can tell you it makes her happy to make you happy. Like she's our director of customer success and she shines brightest when our customers are happy. Hi, Nancy. Hello. We also have Rini Punzi in the house, our director of sales and marketing. Yeah. Um, welcome, Rini. Thanks for joining. Yep. Thank you. All right, so we're here to create a space for our guests, Ivan and Rose, and we're going to actually introduce them in a minute. Um, but for, for now, uh, this is now Nancy's time to do some housekeeping items. Housekeeping, okay. Hey, everybody, thank you for coming. Fun to see so many names in the list who I already know, and welcome to those who we don't know yet. Um, there's two ways to communicate with, with us during the workshop. The first is via the chat. Um, you'll find the chat icon at the bottom of your Zoom window. Um, use that for technical issues, and we'll do our best to help um, if you have any issues there. If you have questions for our panelists uh, for, or for any of us, post them in the Q&A section, also at the bottom of the Zoom window. And we'll address those uh, probably live as we're going along. Just so you know what to expect, the format today is that um, we'll start off with a couple of stories from our guests, um, establish that they have credibility in this world, and then we'll learn how they've incorporated uh, technology into the work that they're doing and the problems that they're solving, and then uh, open up officially for questions at the end. And um, we also hopefully will have time to hear about Rose and Ivan's go-to apps that they also use that are, um, you know, it, for anything. Um, and then finally, uh, since we don't get to have real lunch with you, we just get to have virtual lunch. We're working with a company called Territory Foods to provide meals to full-time frontline healthcare workers. And we are donating one meal for each workshop attendee. And for every two meals, Territory Foods contributes a third meal. So, so far with our workshop series, we have generated 259 meals for frontline uh, workers. And um, this, the meals from this show are going to those who are working in New Orleans. So um, back to you, Krista. Nola. All right. Well, I just want to say hi to a few more people who have joined. David Simi, welcome. Thank you for joining. Great to see you. The Nathans from Citizen Energy are here. All right. The Nathans. All right. And a long time, one of our very, very first early adopters, Sean Carroll, has joined us. So welcome, Sean. Thank you for being here. Um, all right. So Ivan is a botanist and wildlife biologist and also serves as the workshop manager. Actually, let me share my screen right now. Am I sharing you guys? No. No, not yet. Okay, hold on. Let me do this better. Okay, so play this. You can see there. All right, so Ivan Parr is a botanist and wildlife biologist and also serves as the workshop manager for the Western section of the Wildlife Society. This is actually how we got to know Ivan. Um, he put together a data collection app workshop in a sweet little spot, like in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and uh, we drove up there and we were one of the presenting companies. And uh, shortly thereafter, Ivan started using WildNote for one of his projects. Um, he's an avid photographer. He spends his free time exploring and searching for rare and unusual plants and animals. 
This multi-talented explorer is also the author and illustrator, very creative, of a very cool Northern California Tide Pools map made for adults and children of all ages. So I was just looking, Ivan, at um, WildNote, and it was in 2018 that you started using WildNote for what I would say were pre-construction protocol level surveys. Is that the right way to say it? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, great. Um, actually, Rose helped me on that earlier. So, um, okay, let me introduce Rose. Rose is a wetland and peatland ecologist with experience in oil and gas spill remediation, vegetation surveys, wetland ecology, and boreal wetland reclamation. She has eight years of graduate research focused on boreal peatland development and peatland reclamation in the Athabasca oil sands region. She has experience with environmental impact assessments, EIAs, environmental assessments, EAs, and pre-disturbance assessments, PDAs, both with fieldwork and report writing. She has specialist skills in bryophyte and vascular plant studies, botany nerd, uh, wetland delineation, <laughs> providing expert witness testimony, literature review, and technical report writing. She has field work experience in Texas, Alberta, Sweden, and the U.S. Midwest region. So welcome one of our favorite botany nerds, Rose. Welcome both of you. All right, so we like to start each, uh, each um, webinar with stories from the field. So Ivan, you got a story for us, some amazing, crazy, fun, beautiful, uh, day out in the field you'd like to talk about? Oh, um, uh, sure. So let's see. Probably one of my favorite days in the field was uh, visiting a potential mitigation site in hopes of finding, you know, some kind of endangered species uh, out there. And as it turned out, uh, we headed out there early in the morning and we found pretty much everything that had potential to occur uh, we found it within a few hours, mm. uh, including something that that we had thought was extirpated from the area. So uh, that was that was probably one of the highlights of my of my field career. That's so cool. So extirpated means you thought it no longer lived there, and then it ended up was thriving there or something. Right. We thought it was locally extinct. Yeah. Very cool. What was the species? Uh, it was a horned lizard. Uh, actually, we had we had two species that were thought extirpated: a horned lizard and a type of a beetle. Right on. How about you, Rose? You got a story from the field for us? So many, so many stories. But <laughs> one. So my very first year doing research in Fort McMurray, Alberta, which is pretty far north in Alberta, we were hiking on an animal trail looking for sites that had been used the previous year by another PhD student. And as we're hiking, we come across this open area that has this giant mound of cookies and donuts in it. <laughs> and I was like, what? What the hell is this? <laughs> and the, the, P, the other PhD student who was with me turns around, looks at me and says, we are leaving this area right now. And I was like, why? Because the cookies are dangerous? And he's <laughs> like, Rose, you're an idiot. We're in Canada. We're in Northern Canada. That's how they bait bears. Oh. And I was like, great. <laughs> so some hunter had hiked along our animal trail and that's how they bait bears in Northern Alberta. They go to Tim Hortons and they get the stale cookies and stale donuts and they put a big pile of them where they want to hunt. That's how they bait Kristen Hazard too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now I know. They don't use raw meat, they use donuts, woo. That's funny. I had no idea. <laughs> it yeah. was funny and slightly horrifying. Because yeah. then we were like, well, I guess we're not going to these sites. No. Oh, bears. Great. So today the topic is photo management. Um, I, I've been building these data collection apps for um, a little over almost 10 years now. And I was really quite surprised at how many photos got uploaded almost immediately once they were, once the functionality was available. And it really made me um, understand how visual 
we are as a species and how photos can really bring to light uh, a true story of what's going on out in the field. And so uh, Wild Note's been um, online and being used since about late 2000, or like 2017 were our alpha beta users. And um, since then, over 120,000 photos have been uploaded to the system. Over 120,000 photos, there's a lot of photos. Um, five different of our companies have uploaded over 10,000 photos. <laughs> and um, I was looking at AECOM, uh, Rose's project, and um, you guys have uploaded over 2,000 photos. Oh, so many photos. Right, yeah. <laughs> So um, we asked you both here today, um, if you could talk about, um, if we could just start with the problem of photo management, especially before we had such nice um, technology, you know, that we could have in our pockets. Um, what were you dealing with um, prior to uh, newer technology when you had to deal with uh, managing photos? So why don't we start with you, Ivan? So I, I brought some, some, uh, some props here. So. The olden days, this isn't actually that old. This is just a few years old. This is a, this is a cool pix. And oh, Rose has got one too. <laughs> but, I still use this one. I still use this one. It's got a great macro lens. <laughs> uh, this doesn't work. I, I own this for about mm, six months and it stopped working, <laughs> but, which, is, which is pretty common. Um, so, so, you know, back in the olden days, you had to have one of these. You had to have a card reader that goes with it and you had to have a charger that didn't last very long. And then of course you'd run into mistakes and so you'd have to have your handy dandy manual mm -hmm. with it. And so mm -hmm. I would always carry, mm -hmm. carry this whole bunch of stuff with me into the field, <laughs> mm -hmm. which if, if you know me in my photography, that's not much at all, but you know, you only have so many hands and you only have so much space and uh, you know, you're trying to collect with the GPS unit, you're trying to take images with your camera and it can be really a burden. Yeah, yeah, totally. How about you, Rose? You, you got anything to add to that in terms of the, the dealing with photos out in the field? Um, I second everything Ivan had to say, and then I would just add to that that I took just as many pictures with my camera as I took, as I take with WildNote, but the post field processing of those photos. If you don't do it right away, you end up with a folder that has like a thousand photos in it because that's how many my SD card holds. But where did they come from? What was I looking at? What direction was I facing? None, none of them are captioned. Um, what, what is this photo of? Oh shoot, I took four photos of my thumb. <laughs> And just the, the post-processing, and then if you have multiple crews in the field and everybody has a camera trying to remind everybody you need to download your photos and sort them every evening. Yeah, yeah. And, and if someone leaves the project and you find a folder labeled with their initials and full of photos and you're like, oh, geez, where are these from? When did these get taken? What am I even looking at? <laughs> yeah, I would imagine like you go back to a, a folder full of pictures from three months ago and you're like, okay, how am I gonna figure out what all of these actually are? Yeah, exactly. And that was yeah. the thing that was so obvious to me. It was so obvious I didn't talk about it very much, but I now I've learned to talk about it, which is with an app like WildNote, the photos stay attached to the data in the survey. There's no disconnect. And so. Yeah, which is like a miracle. Yeah. It's like a miracle. It's a miracle, exactly. <laughs> it just stays connected. You don't have to worry about reconnecting later. So that's very cool. Um, anything else you want to talk about photos out in the field? Um, so we talked about the dealing with them as a separate device. We talked about the post-processing of them. How about um, having to get them into final reports? Like what would you do? In the past, would you have to build those like in Word or PowerPoint? Or like, how would you go about building photo logs prior to having an automated way of doing it? You'd spend many, many hours in Word, taking, pasting, and then formatting the photographs and then compressing the Word documents. Right. So 
you know, the advent of WildNote not only made it possible for you to know what your photos are attached to, where they are, because, you know, even if you just have an iPad, you're taking all these photographs and they get lost on an endless warren on the iPad. And then you take them off the iPad and save them in an endless warren on your network drive. So the ability to take your, your WildNote app and then PDF a, a, an appendix out of it is just life-saving. It saves hours and hours. Yeah. I, I, we heard from one of our customers that they literally didn't have to hire a part-time admin person during field season because of the photo logs coming out of WildNote. Prior to that, you just they would hire someone to do all of that manual work. Um, I was looking at, uh, I was actually talking to Rose prior to this, uh, we started um, with the protocol level surveys were red, that you guys were working on when you first started on WildNote were red-legged frog, owl, and loggerhead shrike, which Rose told me about those birds, great. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then butterflies where I also saw on there, but Rose also said there was golden eagle. Um, did you, for those particular types of surveys, do you utilize photos a lot in, in those like pre-construction type of surveys or is it difficult to get a picture of, of the actual species or how does that work for, for you guys? Um, so I have, you know, two cameras with me usually in the field, one for taking pictures of animals and one for that, that go into the project. So for, for animal stuff, I have, can I share a few gadgets for this? Please. So, um, so, you know, everybody's got their phone. So I use this thing, it's called an Ola clip and it has a little magnifying glass on it and you fit this magnifier over your phone camera and you can take macro images with that. So, you know, for your butterflies, your beetles, your, your, uh, your botanical Moss. specimens. Mosses. Uh, mosses, <laughs> yes. And then uh, there's something called a digiscope that you can use to get your eagles and, you know, Ooh. birds and the things that are kind of far away. And actually, why don't I send you all a link for the phone scope and the Ola clip yeah. so that you can check these out. Uh, uh, Ivan, the Digiscope works with your, your mobile device as well? Yeah. Wow, cool. Yeah, so yeah. the trouble, the trouble there is that, that you have all these images that are not associated with your wild note, so you do have to find a, a, a good photo storage system and a good photo saving system. Yeah, right. I'm curious if any of the uh, folks who are attending the workshop have used either of these tools, just ping in on the yeah. The and we want to answer the open question, Nancy. Um, well, I think they're answering it now. What are you using now instead of point and shoot? So you guys use mostly your mobile devices, would you say, for your photos in the field? And the iPad. Um, I'm not a very good photographer. So I use the iPad to take pictures of the habitat, which it's important to document it because birds fly around. They're not like moss. They don't sit still. <laughs> so I, I take a lot of pictures of habitat of the burrows in the area is, you know, the big question for us is, is this appropriate habitat for burrowing owls? Mm. And then uh, my partner in crime who goes with me for all these surveys, he's actually a really experienced bird photographer and he usually brings his own camera with a giant fancy lens and mm -hmm. he does the bird pictures and then i i wish it could be associated with wild note but then i just spend a lot of time emailing or texting him hey send me the photos send me the photos send me the photos yeah yeah i've seen with bird nest surveys on wild note folks use, using the, cam the phone and then pointing their finger at the nest <laughs> and they take the picture. Oh, yep. So yep. there's some visual indication. I've also seen people take a picture and I know you can do this on the, on the iOS device, you can draw on it. So maybe like drawing an arrow to the nest because it's so far away and then, um, and then and, and showing the nest that way. Um, which actually leads me to the next segment, which is go-to apps. So, Rose, do you have any um, 
go-to apps that you like to use out in the field, whether they're photo related or not, just generally that are helpful to you when you're doing your environmental consulting work? Uh, I'm a bit of a technophobe. So <laughs> Google Earth. Yep. Google Earth is my go-to because, well, I do a lot of habitat assessments and wetland delineations and Google Earth allows you to look at past, past imagery and current imagery and that's really helpful. Oh, it does. Past imagery? Um, cool. That is very cool. Yeah, I forget how to do it now, but you can flip through time. Oh. Like you can like you can on the on the PC version. Yeah, yeah. That's very it's, cool. Yeah, it's not easy to get to. Right, okay. I'm sure we could Google it and figure it out though. How about you, Ivan? You got any <laughs> Yeah, so um, I, I'm interested in health and safety. So my favorite app is this one called uh, Snakebite 911. And it <laughs> basically, you know, allows you to report where you see rattlesnakes and then gives you advice for obtaining emergency support, including where the nearest hospital with antivenom is. And so wow. that, that takes off a, a big layer of paranoia that I have, or, or legitimate fear that I have uh, yeah. when going into remote places. Yeah. I sent my dog to a uh, rattlesnake aversion training. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. They had real live snakes. They had the scent. They had the sound. They had the fake ones. They had all these different things to um, dog to go around whenever they sensed any type of rattlesnake. Has he since ever signaled to you that there's a rattlesnake? No, no. And in fact, he stepped right over a, one recently. And uh, nothing happened, but he, his focus was on like chasing a bird. And he, Squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It was like, he didn't even notice. So not sure how that, well that worked, but um, there's a lot of rattlesnakes in our area. Um, all right. So. Uh, can, I, can I interject super quick? Yeah. I just, we, we kind of glossed over it, but we talked about the pain points in it. This is, well, I know this is not a, um, an advertisement for a wild note. I did want to actually hear from Ivan and Rose what aspects of using a tool like wild note for their photo management have improved like what what's is it better for you guys in terms of your report building that kind of thing like what's what things are you liking most about this or other apps that you might be using for your photo management? Uh, Ivan? Okay so um I mean, as I mentioned earlier, it saves a lot of hours simply having those photos attached to, to the data. And it saves- So meaning it's integrated in with the data set itself. So you don't have to go and put those things together and reconnect right. it. Okay. You don't, have to, you don't have to search for them. You don't have to, to file them outside uh, and, and you don't have to create your own data sheets and, and figure out how to in, import those. Do you guys have to rename your photos? With WildNote, uh, no, I don't. Um, with any other photos, I, I have another complicated system for renaming, saving, and filing. So that's like a re it is a requirement yeah. in, in the companies that you work for that like you put the photos on your server and they have to have some kind of contextual name. It's not a requirement, but it, it certainly is helpful. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. AECOM doesn't have a requirement for that, but. I find it really helpful when when you're doing a multi-year project to have things renamed so that whoever comes next knows where these photos were taken. And yeah, uh, WildNote saves an incredible amount of time post-processing. And I especially like that I can caption the photos in the field. Those photos mm -hmm. then uh, automatically associated with a data sheet. And then if I, I want to create a photo log that's just the photos, they come, it's so easy to do. And they come out with a GPS location already associated with them. Gotcha, okay, thank you. I just wanted to expand on that a little bit just in case our guests didn't know um, how those things are helping you. So I appreciate that. 
And the, and hey, um, I see a really interesting question here um, from one of the guests. It says, great tips. There's a few great apps that display a compass and lat long in the frame of the photo. Have you guys ever used those? So it sounds like it kind of superimposes it on top, just like you would sketch, but it actually has the compass. I've yep. seen those from outside sources, but I haven't actually used one. Yeah, interesting. So we've seen a bunch of that come through on Wild Note. It's very cool. What, one of the ones we ended up testing with is called Theodolite, and that um, does the compass. It gives you the lat long. It gives you the timestamp, and um, it's it's really nice visually. And um, that what happens there in terms of a process is you take the photo through the app Theodolite, and then it saves it to your gallery on your phone. And then when you go into WildNote, the survey area, then you click, I uh, wanna take a picture, and instead of actually taking the picture, you click pick from gallery. And then you can pick from any previous photo you've taken, that is in the gallery. And then it's cool because now you've got this photo with the compass and the lat long, and it's all just right on right on the picture. It's really nice. And does it still come in with the regular metadata? Yeah, so the EXIF data, that was a big project for us. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we, we retained the EXIF data, which is the metadata. Um, that was gonna be one of my polling questions. Have you ever heard of EXIF? Because that was like a big, what is that thing? But basically it'll keep the GPS data. Other kind of EXIF data is like, what kind of device was this captured on? What was the quality of the resolution? And just all the different pieces of information that you could have about a photograph is put into this thing called the EXIF. And we now retain that information. We also geotag it and save it within our database as well, just because it's easier to access than trying to access some like metadata file associated with the, the, the photo itself. Um, and that's another thing I've seen a lot with WildNote is folks um, doing the KML export out of WildNote and adding, clicking the button to include the photos. And then the photos will be plotted on the KML map for you. And it's actually a nice way to look and make sure, someone told us this recently, they utilized that to make sure they hit all the spots they needed to hit that day because they would have taken photos at those spots. And then visually through the map, they can kind of reference that basically. There's another question from Nathan Wright. He wonders if you guys ever use your phone's mic to dictate mm. uh, your captions or do you always type your captions out? I always hey. type. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm just old fashioned like that. And I hate the sound of my voice. <laughs> I think you have a great voice, Evan. Um, kind of deep. Uh, I've tried the dictation <laughs> on, on WildNote, uh, just in like even a text field. Um, seems to work out just fine. I guess it depends on how well the phone is capturing what I'm dictating versus putting in nonsense. Have you, have you tried any of that, uh, Rini or Nancy, on WildNote, the dictation feature? I did do some experimenting um, when I was doing that Seabird uh, monitoring, and you get good at it, the, you know, the translation, so you don't even have to hear your voice, Ivan, to there. It just like, translates it to text. And um, you kind of learn by doing, like learn when to pause, and you can even put in punctuation by saying period or comma. And um, it got to be pretty effective, just, you know, kind of learning by doing. Okay, now we go to the last segment, which we're still kind of workshopping here, so please be patient. It's called Kristen's Crazy Ideas, crazy with a K. So <laughs> here's my idea. <laughs> This is what I want to have happen one day with Wild Note. We're talking years out. But how cool would it be if you were to be out in a natural landscape? Let's say the mountain that I hike on every morning. There's a riparian area. I take a picture of that riparian area. And then Wild Note uses machine learning and goes, huh, tree, oak, quercus. Uh, I know that one. Uh, oak, oak, <laughs> oak, oak. And it like knows the lat long of each oak because it's relative to the lat long I just took the picture. And it can actually understand what kind of species it is. And, and then it captures that part of the picture for that particular oak. And basically in a repeater in wild note, it auto generates, let's say there's 10 oaks, it auto generates 10 repeaters with the lat long, the species, and that portion of the picture that 
um, documents that oath. What do you think? You think that's going to happen one day? <laughs> How about anyone out there? Rose and, Rose and Ivan will be out of business if that happens. I don't know. Yeah, no, no I, 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 I object to this. <laughs> yeah, same here. I, yeah. I don't want a computer program replacing me. That's I, my job. That's my job you're talking about. <laughs> the computer program gets to have all the fun, not you. <laughs> No, well, you still have to walk, walk the computer around. <laughs> Unless we have a uh, robot. Uh, oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Is there another That's question, so Nancy? There's, one, there's another fun question. Last thought, just curious. What's everyone's favorite item that you've used? Seen thrown into a picture for scale? A ruler, a pencil, a lucky penny? Oh, that's a great question. I love it. Yeah. Ivan or Rose, do you ever? Uh... So um, we were the same project with Rose. Early days, we found a skateboard wheel just rolling down the road. <laughs> and it, it, it kept popping up. And so we took the skateboard wheel and we made that our scale for all the rare plants that we found and, and stuck it in a picture. And I believe later we had like a rubber snake or some kind of toy that we used as well. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a fellow graduate student in my cohort who had a keychain with a rubber chicken on it that was like four inches long, and he always used his keychain with his four inch rubber chicken. That's awesome. <laughs> and it was so bizarre. <laughs> but we found that a ruler. <laughs> Rini, don't we have something to give away? We do. Thank you, Nancy, for that. So, um, giveaway time. Giveaway time. This could be you. So, we have a raffle. We've been doing a raffle each week. Let's get this into the camera. We have a power pack. So, if you're ever out in the field and you run out of battery, this could be your friend. And you could win one um, in our thank you email for attending. We'll send a sign up. And everybody gets, everybody wins a smudge away. Great for cleaning oh. your mobile devices, glasses, whatever you have. So please uh, sign up. I'm not sure I can support this piece, but if our form supports a photo submission, I would love folks to uh, submit a favorite photo. And we'll turn this into a photo contest instead of a drawing. So look out for that request and good luck to win your power pack. Awesome. All right, so uh, thank you, Ivan and Rose. Uh, you can see on my screen here, this is their email in case you would like to get in touch with them. And our next Lunch and Learn is with Sean Carroll, who I shouted out earlier, one of our very, very first early adopter supporters. And he's going to talk about taxonomy and vegetation management. Uh, huge, huge aspect of what we're building here at Wild Note. And um, I just wanted to throw this out there. This is another thing we're kind of workshopping. Um, this is just a list of ways in which uh, we, at, uh, with the Wild Note app, support um, photo management. I feel like we are building the more, most robust photo management application. Um, for environmental consultants. And if you would like a demo of these features, if you've got photo management issues that you're dealing with and you would like a tool to help you out with that, please um, uh, ping us in the chat and we will set something up for you so that you can um, learn about what we got going on here and see if it will bring value to you. Um, anything else we wanna add, Nancy, before we sign off here? No, but thank you again, Rose and Ivan. It's great to, great to have you guys on with us. We appreciate your time. All right, everyone. Have a good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you so much, Ivan. Now go, go, drop that food off. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All thanks, right. all attendees. Bye, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank all you. Right. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome, Amy. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Nita. Thank you, David Kistner, for joining. <laughs>